Uh, welcome back to this next video and in this video we are going to talk about the composition of the saliva. Uh, in the first part of this video I've told you about the uh, saliva gland in general and I've told you that uh, any tissue that secretes fluid is usually called a gland and there are two types of the gland in the uh, human body the exocrine glands and the endocrine glands and the salivary gland that was an example of the exocrine uh, gland. Uh, the salivary gland, as I've told you, uh, there are two types of the salivary gland. One they are called is the minor glands, uh, which produce a very small uh, amount of the saliva, like 5%. And then there are major glands. Uh, in the minor gland, I've told you about the uh, important minor gland, like the uh, buccal, the lingual, the palatine, and the labial glands. And one of the important glands was the uh, von Ebner's gland which is producing the uh, lingual lipase which are responsible for the uh, breakdown of the uh, fat. Uh, then I told you that the uh, major salivary gland that include the parotid gland which are near the ears. And then we talked about the sublingual one and then I told you about the uh, submandibular glands. Uh, the secreting cells in all of these glands they are called is the SNR cells uh, which are further divided into two classes. One that is known as the serous cells uh, which produce the enzyme rich fluid and then another one the mucus cells which actually produce the uh, mucins. So uh, in this video we are going to talk about the uh, composition of the saliva that uh, which kind of the components they are present in the uh, saliva so the composition of saliva now if you talk about the composition of the saliva the first and the major component of the saliva that is water uh, and about 99.5% uh, of the saliva uh, that is made up of water so this is the uh, major uh, constituents of the uh, saliva the uh, other important component that is present in the saliva, these are the uh, electrolytes. And these uh, electrolytes, they are usually present in a very small quantity uh, and they are usually measured in a millimoles per liter. Uh, some of the uh, important uh, uh, electrolytes that are present in the saliva, uh, let me tell you some of them. Uh, like the, if you talk about the first one, uh, sodium is there, it's one of the uh, important electrolyte that is present in the uh, saliva and its uh, quantity is usually like uh, 21 millimoles per liter in the saliva. Uh, another important component is the uh, potassium and the concentration of the potassium in the uh, saliva is usually between uh, 10 to 36 millimoles per liter. This is the uh, normal concentrations of these uh, electrolytes that are present in the uh, uh, saliva. Uh, another important component that is the uh, calcium and the concentration of the uh, calcium in the saliva. Calcium and it's the uh, is having concentration from 1.2 to 2.8 millimoles per liter. Uh, then you have got the uh, chloride ions, the chloride and the concentration of the chloride in the uh, saliva is between 5 to 40 millimoles per liter. Uh, another important component is the uh, magnesium and the uh, magnesium is usually uh, uh, 0 0.08 to uh, 0 0.5 millimoles per liter. Uh, another important component that another important electrolyte, these are the uh, bicarbonates and uh, their concentration in the saliva is uh, usually 25 millimoles per liter and many more. These are just some of the uh, important electrolytes that are present in the uh, saliva. Now, the most important function of these electrolytes in the saliva is that they are acting as buffering agents. Uh, by that, I mean that uh, if you look at the uh, composition of the uh, saliva, uh, you find a lot of proteins, a lot of enzymes in the uh, saliva. And for the proper functioning of these proteins and enzymes, you need uh, a particular pH. 
and this electrolyte are actually ensuring a, a buffered environment and in this buffered environment these enzymes and this protein they can perform their function in an efficient manner so these electrolytes these different kind of the electrolytes they are acting as a buffering agents in the saliva the third component of the uh, saliva the third important component of the saliva uh, that is known as uh, mucus now, uh, what this uh, mucus contain uh, are this mucus contain important protein, and the first important protein is known as the mucins. Now, these mucins uh, they are actually uh, working as uh, lubricating agents, and these uh, lubricating agents and they have uh, important functions like they are having a, a protective function. They are protecting the oral cavity and another important function is that they are uh, acting as a lubricant for the food so that uh, you can swallow them easily. These are the important functions of these uh, mucins so that they can be uh, swallowed, uh, swallow them, you can swallow them the food easily. If you look at the uh, structure of the mucins, uh, these mucins, they are uh, heavily glycosylated proteins heavily glycosylated proteins now what i mean by heavy glycosylated proteins this means that there is a protein uh, this mucin this is a protein that means there is a gene for the mucin that is transcribed that is translated and in the end you are going to get a protein but when the protein that is made this protein go through the uh, post translational modifications let me write this after the synthesis of this protein they go through the post translational modifications and this these post translation modifications mean that once that once the protein that is made uh, different kind of the uh, other moieties that are added to these proteins and the addition of these moieties is important to give this protein a particular 3d structure and hence a particular function so if you talk about the uh, glycosylation part glycosylation mean that you are adding some uh, carbohydrate moieties uh, to the protein what this glycosylation mean uh, and the heavily glycosylation mean that you are adding a lot of carbohydrate moieties to these mucin proteins uh, the important uh, carbohydrate moieties that you add to these mucin proteins they are known as the uh, mucopolysaccharides this is this can also be uh, another important name for the mucin proteins uh, but they are also called as the mucopolysaccharides and they are also known as the uh, glycose aminoglycans so these glycose aminoglycans they are actually the uh, carbohydrate moieties that, that will be added to the mucin proteins once they have been uh, synthesized and this uh, a mucopolysaccharide it can refer to the uh, protein that has been uh, uh, glycosylated or it can also refer to the uh, carbohydrate moieties that are being added now what this uh, mucopolysaccharide or this uh, glycose aminoglycans contain now these uh, amino uh, glycose aminoglycans or the mucopolysaccharides they are actually uh, long and unbranched polysaccharides long and unbranched polysaccharides uh, and they are made up of uh, repeating disaccharide units this mean is that the uh, disaccharides what this mean is that the uh, uh, single unit for this long chain uh, these long unbranched polysaccharide is made up of a disaccharide units now let us discuss this disaccharide unit in a little bit detail what this uh, uh, disaccharide unit contain now this uh, disaccharide unit uh, one of its component is made up of an amino sugar and its other component that is made up of the uh, what is called as a uronic sugar 
Now, if you look at the uh, amino sugar, in amino sugar, you can have the uh, uh, N-acetylglucosamine. Let me write this. The N-acetylglucosamine. And the other option that is available in the uh, amino sugar uh, is known as the uh, N-acetylgalactosamine. The N-acetylgalactosamine. Uh, if you talk about the uronic sugar, the uh, important members of the uronic sugar are the uh, glucuronic acid, the glucuronic acid, and the uh, other one, uh, this will be like GLUCU, glucuronic acid, uh, and another component of this uronic sugar, another member of this uh, uronic sugar family uh, that can be uh, iduronic acid. Now, when you make uh, a disaccharide to make the polymers or the polysaccharide, what you do is that you pick uh, one member from the amino sugar, you pick another member from the uronic sugar, you make a disaccharide unit, and then these disaccharide, they, these disaccharide units, they combine with each other to give you a long chain of the polysaccharide. For example, the N-acetyl glucose amine it can combine with the glucuronic acid giving you a disaccharide unit and these disaccharide units are then going to make the uh, polysaccharide. The n glucose amine can combine with the hydroronic acid again giving you a disaccharide unit. Another option can be that the n glucose amine it can combine with the glucuronic acid. The, uh, it can combine with the uh, iduronic acid. What this means is that you can have a lot of possible combinations for the formation of these glycose aminoglycans because the glycose aminoglycans they are very large family of the unbranched polysaccharide uh, polysaccharide chains. So the combination uh, you can have a variety of the combinations. So the uh, mucin uh, protein. They go through the uh, post-translational modification and in the post-translational modifications these uh, disaccharide units they can be added to them and then these uh, uh, disaccharide units make a polysaccharide thereby giving the mucins a particular shape and a particular structure and then they can perform their function of lubrication of the food and the uh, epithelial cell or the oral cavity you can see. Uh, another important component that is present in the uh, mucus, they are the glycoproteins. If we talk about this uh, mucus, and this will be the first component, the mucin proteins. And the second component of this particular uh, mucus, that can be the uh, glycoproteins. Again, you are talking about the glycoproteins. They will be this kind of the proteins that will be uh, having a carbohydrate moiety attached to them. If I give you uh, the uh, some of the examples of the glycoproteins that are present in the uh, in the saliva, one of the uh, example will be the uh, proline rich uh, glycoproteins, uh, which are actually produced by the uh, parotid glands of the uh, the major the parotid gland of the salivary gland, which is a major salivary gland. So the uh, glycoprotein they are going to uh, produce the uh, proline rich glycoproteins for short they are also known as the uh, prg proteins now the mucins and the glycoproteins because of their glycosylation property they can retain water and if they have the ability to retain water that means they can have the uh, activity of the lubrication and this is what these uh, the mucus the mucins and the uh, glycoproteins uh, they are doing. Uh, we will talk about the uh, enzymes, the different kind of the enzymes that are present in the uh, saliva in the next video.